Hey all and welcome to part one of building a modular model railway. My name is Luke and in this series of videos I'll step you through the techniques I'll be using to build my home layout. The series will start from scratch from a pile of wood on the ground to a fully scenic layout built for operations and switching. Step one is the benchwork, so let's get started. I'm going to start by building the framework which will form the core structure of the module. If you're interested in knowing the specific measurements for the modules and a breakdown of the cost and total price per module, check out bouldercreekrailroad.com. I've put all the information up there for you to check out. I'm using power tools for making most of the cuts, however you can make the same cuts using a handsaw. It's obviously a lot quicker with the power tools. Don't forget to check with the hardware store where you purchase your wood. They often have a cutting service and sometimes it's free and quite accurate. With all my pieces cut, it's simply a matter of test fitting, then glue, drill and screw the frame together. I'm also countersinking all the screws so at a later stage I can attach the fascia without too much trouble. I'm trying to be very careful and accurate with all my measurements. Taking the time to be accurate now will save you time further down the track when screwing the ply top and fitting the legs. I use clamps where I can to get a tight and accurate fit and I can't clamp every piece, but when I can, I will use the clamps. Now that the frame is done, I'll move on to the leg assembly. Basically, I want to reinforce the corners where the legs attach and install thread inserts to enable the legs to be removable. Gluing sandpaper to a flat surface can help with sanding the top of the reinforcements flat. I'm using a template made from a piece of leg to ensure all the holes are drilled in the same spots on each leg assembly. That way the legs will be interchangeable with each module. Using a drill press is almost essential to getting accurate holes. It is possible to use a hand drill, however the holes may not be accurate enough to have all the legs interchange easily. The thread inserts are simply screwed in. For these to work properly, they need to be in straight, otherwise when you attempt to screw the leg on, you might cross thread the bolt. If the holes aren't spot on, then you may need to have specific spots for each leg on the modules. But that's no big deal, you'll just need to mark the spots for each specific leg. With the leg reinforcements done, I can now move on to making the legs. I'm using 30 by 30 centimeter square legs, which seem quite light, but with cross bracing, they will be more than enough for the size of the modules I'm building. Just like I had a template for the reinforcement pieces, I also have a template for the legs as well. It makes making multiple pieces accurate very easy, not to mention having the tools for the job. Even with the drill press and the template, not all the holes will be perfect. So I'll drill a larger hole in the leg to allow some wiggle room when screwing the legs into the module. I'll need at least a 6mm hole to get the bolt through, but I'm going to use a 7.5mm drill bit to give myself some room. Once that's all drilled out, I give it a test fit to make sure it's going to work. With the leg removed, I can glue the reinforcement into the corner of each module. Just make sure to install them the right way around so they are all in the same way. And try not to add glue where the thread insert is. Otherwise the glue may squeeze out into the thread when you clamp it down and prevent the bolt from going all the way in when attaching the leg. Next I'll install the plywood top. This is what the 2 inch foam sub road bed will be glued onto.
Don't forget to screw down the center as well. This will help prevent the middle lifting and creating a rise and it will also help ensure the module is rigid. Because these are modules and they will connect together, it's quite important to make sure the ends are clean and square. They will connect regardless, however you want as few imperfections as possible at the end, so the line between the modules is small as possible. That way the connection will be less noticeable once the scenery has been applied. With the frame done and the plywood top in place, I can finish the legs. I make sure the width of the leg at the top is the same at the bottom and use a piece of wood to clamp and hold them into the position. As it stands, the module is very unstable. I will install cross brace to help keep the module stable. There's no specific science to this. Just measure and cut the brace and screw it into position. The cross brace I'm using is a little thick, so once I have it in position, I need to notch out about four millimeters to make it fit perfectly. That way when the legs are removed, the assembly is able to sit completely flat on the floor and they stack easily. Because my layout is L-shaped, I can get away without having cross braces along the length of the module. It's up to you if you glue the cross braces to the legs. I decided to screw them into position without using glue. This gives me the flexibility to disassemble the leg in the future if I need to. Quite a difference. Bracing along the length may be necessary depending on the layout. Another important step in module construction is the feet. This does two things. It lifts the wood off the ground preventing rot and provided you have adjustable feet it allows you to level the tables. So now we're almost done. We need to glue the foam down but before I apply the glue I rough up the foam to get a better adhesion. A quick once or twice over with a wire brush should be sufficient. I found carpenter's glue to be more than sufficient when gluing it down. Foam has many benefits, mostly due to its ease of use when forming terrain, which is the primary reason I've chosen to work with foam. And don't forget to weigh it down whilst it dries. The area of the module most likely to sustain damage is going to be the ends where one module connects to the other. To help avoid damage, I'm going to reinforce the ends with a sheet of plywood. I first sand back any excess foam, and for the glue, I'll use Gorilla Glue. It's very strong and will expand into any gaps or crevices in the foam and wood, ensuring the bond is strong. I want the top of the plywood to sit as close as possible to the top of the foam. If anything, I want it to be slightly higher and not lower. Where the two modules connect, I glue the ends in at the same time, clamping both modules together while it dries. This helps get an accurate join between the two modules. That completes part one, building the benchwork. In part two, I'll look at setting out the track plan, laying the road bed and laying the track. Be sure to subscribe and don't miss out on part two. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the build. I try to post as many videos as I can, so if you want to stay up to date with my latest releases, please subscribe. I have plenty more videos and ideas on the way. In the meantime, feel free to check out my channel and see if there's any other videos there that you might like. Cheers and thanks for watching.